And now to some grim figures. And a new report in the country suggests that a Kenyan woman dies every two hours in childbirth. The study conducted by leading research institutions also indicates that only 25% of children whose mothers die in those circumstances actually survive. Kitians will kiss the Nyabwa reports on Kenya's deadly deliveries. Two weeks have passed since Phoebe gave birth to her little bundle of joy, but she doesn't tire of looking into his face. She is simply grateful that they both emerged from the delivery room safe and healthy. Phoebe gave birth at a public hospital in Kisumu together with several other mothers, each forced to wait her turn. <laughs> While Phoebe's story had a happy ending, this was not the case for three other mothers who went into labor the very same night. In the face of her joy, she cast the past aside, yet Phoebe could easily have become a statistic. Every two hours in Kenya, a woman dies during pregnancy or childbirth. The impact on family members is devastating, as a study conducted in the last three years found. The study, titled A Price Too High to Bear, was conducted in three sub-districts in Siaya County by Family Care International, the International Center for Research on Women, and the Kemri CDC Research and Public Health Collaboration. Among the 59 maternal deaths examined, only 15 babies whose mothers died survived. Maternal and child health, that way they are interrelated. You find, if you look at the mortalities for children under 28 days, that mortality is very much correlated with the maternal mortality rate. Because a mother dies, the, ch the chances of a child surviving. Very minimal. The mother's deaths then set off a chain of events that had a devastating impact on their families. Often the families were confronted with great medical and funeral costs. Many ended up borrowing heavily in order to shoulder the costs and the schooling of the other children was also disrupted. Mother's death ignites a chain of disruption, economic loss, emotional pain that often leads to the death of her baby diminished educational and life opportunities for the surviving children and a deepening cycle of poverty for our children. Kenya has made maternity health care free, but as the United Nations Millennium Development Goals deadline of 2015 looms, stakeholders assert that more must be done to give every pregnancy story a happy ending. Wilkis Tanyabwa, KTN. A tough reality check, check there by Wilkes Tanyabo. But Edith, I mean, every time we talk about mater maternal death, it seems like we leave that conversation there, not realizing that there's a, like a ripple effect of other serious issues we should be concerned Absolutely. about. Absolutely, and that's exactly where I'm picking it up from this mm -hmm. afternoon. James Masharia has said that uh, when a mother dies, the children are left in what he called a life of deepening poverty, and I'll explain that in just a second. Mm -hmm. So let's begin our Super Bowl this afternoon, uh, this evening, this afternoon, based on the figures that were given in that report. And the most, and uh, the first and most important figure is the number of people who are dying every year in this country, number of people being women. In 365 days, 5,500 women die because of pregnancy-related issues. And this is what we're calling maternal mortality. It doesn't necessarily mean that she has to die while delivering. It could be a condition she had which is aggravated by her pregnancy, or it could also be simply a pregnancy which was just mishandled. If you break down this number, it means every 30 days by the end of this month 452 women will have died by the end of this week by Sunday 105 families will be grieving their women and by the end of today 15 women will have lost their lives here's a real reality check given if you got home at maybe 8 p.m. by the time this bulletin ends Betty will be going home I'll be home safely but there'll be one woman who will have lost her life give that another two hours and there's another woman give that another two hours and there's another woman the figures are astronomical and so what this report is doing Wilkis Tanyabo very clearly told you that there's a group of people who've come together sampled 59 cases and these are the results they found <clears throat> 
So I'll take you through the price too high to bear is what they're calling it. And I'll give you a cause and an effect. They say in the report that fatal pregnancy and childbirth complications, this is basically when a mother passes away while she's delivering and then the child is left to deal with complications. This is what happens. A third of the total annual consumption of a household, and they said this is regardless of how much that household is earning in a year. A third of that income will go to pregnancy and childbirth care. And then they went further and said that this is three to six times more than in a household where perhaps there's a safe delivery. And they said that half of these cases, half of the cases where they have to spend so much money, they just can't afford it. So they go into debt because they either have to borrow money or they have to go into uh, taking loans. And so that's what happens. That's the effect. The second effect is delayed or avoided emergency treatment. You simply do not have the money. Imagine a household which brings in 100,000 shillings a year. That means that to take care of this cost, they have to get the equipment of four months of their salary is just not sustainable and so they borrow or they delay the, uh, the emergency treatment for the child who then might later pass on. This report went on to give another cause death of the woman. She has to be buried at some point and the effect is the funeral cost. These figures are astronomical. According to this report, the funeral cost alone exceeds the total annual expenditure. What you spend every year in your house for food, for household products, for housing, every single cent that goes into that is then diverted into funeral costs. What also happens is According to that report, 16 to 26 days of work were lost. Uh, there are men who have to deal with their women's complications leading up to their deaths. And sadly, they lose a lot of working days. And unfortunately, most of these men are living from hand to mouth. And so you can imagine what an economic dent that causes if you lose 16 to 26 days of perhaps getting 50 shillings here, 200 shillings there. And that gives the other ripple effect of borrowing. And in this case, 15% of the respondents said they had to sell their assets in order to take care of that business. The other cause, um, sudden loss of a productive woman. You know, we don't really think about it, but how important are the women in this society? According to this report, they were able to give 61 hours, the women who are deceased, 61 hours of the housework each week is lost because this is what was being taken care of by the woman. And this essentially means that every day the woman is working nine hours to cook, clean, take care of the child. Who is going to do this work? So what happens? The families have to then come in and pick up the slack. 88% of the immediate family have to do that. And what this does is it gets them away from their works which are creating income and it causes an economic disruption. So it's all going back to money. Let's look at, I believe this is the, the, the final one, um, loss of mother to children. I, I don't even want to imagine how difficult it must be for a child to lose their mother or for a child to never have the, the luxury of being able to see their mother. But unfortunately, that's what happens. And the effect, death of newborns. They're called neonatal deaths. Now, according to this report, Wilkis Tanyabwa said that there were 59 cases which were sampled. Only 15 babies survived. Let me give you further figures of this. Of this 15, only 31 of them were able to survive deliveries. So a huge, uh, a huge chunk of them died before they could even see the world. Of those 31, eight died in the first week of life. And then a further eight died in the next several weeks. These 15 babies who survived, survived till 60 days of life. We don't know if they were able to survive beyond these two months, but that's what happens. So what are we saying? We're saying that um, maternal, uh, maternal mortality creates lost opportunities. There are going to be children who are going to grow up without parents, who are going to have to stop schooling because they have to take on responsibilities for adults who will never know what it's like to grow up in a good home. Lost opportunities. We're saying maternal mortality creates dysfunctional homes. The report states that in some of these cases, the children who are left behind were then forced to go live with their grandparents or their aunts or their uncles because culture does not allow them to live with their single fathers. So you've lost a mother and then you're pulled away from from your father quality of life you have to suddenly spend a third of your total annual income on paying bills it's gonna take a while to recover from that 
and the burden on the government. They really have to take care of this and so they have to pour money in there. And what does that mean? You and I, taxes. So it's something that is a price that is too high to bear. We assume that it's just for women. We assume it's for mothers. We assume it's for anyone who has to give birth, but it's really for everyone. It's terribly crashing to see that because most of the times we, 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 we think of it as statistics, you know, like you mentioned, but then behind these statistics, so many things are happening. You know, the children you mentioned, um, children having to grow up without mothers, yes. mothers um, funeral expenses, uh, medical expenses. I mean, it's, it's just crushing. And you know what? This, these are just the, res the, the results mm -hmm. of three counties in Nyanza province. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't even know what the figures look like when you look at the country in its entirety. And this is a goal we're supposed to eliminate by 2015. Are we going to be able to do that? I don't know. Actually, my question would be, are we doing enough? Well, what, what can we do? The first lady is doing something. Yeah. Did you run? Did you even know why she was trying mm -hmm. to run? Mm -hmm. This is why it's so important to have these figures on our screens, to have the first lady talking about it, because these are human beings yeah. dying. Yeah. Thank you very much, Edith, for that.